Making a pizza cutter from hell can be complicated. Not only are there moving parts, but there are significant metaphysical issues that come about from impregnating the cutter itself with the sulfuric stench of Satan's eternal wrath. So I did my best here, but I feel like I was shooting in the dark some. Okay, wait. Is that Star Trek or is that for Satan? Suffice it to say, I'll need to make a detailed drawing before going much further. Despite having significant drawing abilities, I don't usually sketch out my projects, uh, but this will be an exception. There are several ways to make a cutter and the pieces have to fit together with some precision uh, for the cutting wheel to work. Looks like I'm off to a good start. I use a variety of unusual starting materials to make knives and I have a good selection to choose from here in order of descending difficulty. There's a flat bar, leaf spring, horseshoe, lawnmower blade, pickaxe, slitting saw, and a pizza cutter. I think I'll just use a file. The reason a flat bar is the most difficult to forge a circle out of is that uh, you have two sides of equal length, but when you're bending it into a circle, um, there's a difference in circumference from, from the outer edge of the circle to the inner edge of the circle, are those two pieces, uh, two edges of the flat bar, and so you're extending the length of the outer edge, or the circumference is bigger, and then the inner edge is shorter based on the change in the diameter or radius or whatever and so you're compressing that steel and it's going to try to you know get thicker there while it's trying to get thinner on the outer edge and it ends up warping so you you have to um, bring the two edges closer together so that there's less difference in circumference or less difference in uh, the, the change in radius or diameter there Flux was added and the steel was heated to yellow white hot for forge welding. It's a little bit lopsided around the forge weld. There's some extra metal there and it doesn't really want to take on a curve. After straightening it up, we'll grind the outer edge and try to make it as circular as possible. So it's actually within one and a half millimeters in all directions, so that's good enough. I mean, goth enough. Here we're laying out the spokes.
I started a Patreon page. You can check the links below on how to get there. The uh, time and effort and materials and consumables that go into these projects are pretty extensive. So if you find them valuable or entertaining or educational, or you just like watching me goof up a lot, uh, go there, check it out, see what you can get for your different levels of support. There's some cool stuff, including some extra content. So um, thanks for your help. I appreciate all your support, guys. And most of all, thanks for uh, watching. I start out flat grinding the edge, but move pretty quickly to a convex grind on the slack belt. I feel like I need to apologize for the tone of this video. It's a little bit saucy. I'm gluing a round centerpiece on one of the stars that is roughly the same width as our cutting disc. Work on the handle now. I'm not uh, really sure what type of steel this is, but I think we'll get a clue. I'll talk about that soon. First we're going to draw out the area where uh, uh, the wheel will be. set that area apart from the rest of the handle with a twist. We're going to heat treat this in Parks 50 oil, throw it in the tempering oven, and then return to our handle. I want to carve a skull into the material on the end of the handle, so we'll try to set that area apart and draw it out a little to distinguish it from the rest of the handle. told you we'd get back to what I thought this handle material was, what type of steel it was. And you can see some cracks where we twisted our handle, which makes me think the steel was air hardening as it cooled in the vise when we were twisting. It actually looks pretty cool, but it makes me think that this is some sort of uh, tool steel. Let's etch this and see what our uh, blade looks like. We're not done etching. Let's uh, etch some areas on our spokes. I'm 
This is mild steel, so the etching effect is not dramatic, but it's good enough, goth enough. So we're going to turn this wheel around a little pin or axle and we're going to make a housing for that axle here. It's going in the fire to sort of darken up the steel and add some uh, relief. We'll go back and polish it up and the eyes will be black and the skull will be silver. We'll try to center this hole as best we can for the axle, but it's not going to be directly in the center of the star. It's going to be in the center of the circle, so it'll ro roll smoothly. Whoa. Yeah, we're sharpening it. You can see here the spokes are offset just a little bit since the tube or the housing area is parallel to each other despite being offset the effect will be that it will apply attention to our axle pin and hold it in place. You can see it a little better from this side. All right, I need a good woodworker to put a handle on this. And since it's Halloween, I'm going to reach out to the spirit world for some guidance. And that's where this Ouija board comes in. So unfortunately, all I kept getting was Vince Neal complaining, and he's not even dead. 
But no worries, I know how to fix this. Yeah, I can tell I'm getting something. What is that? Oh, it's Shogun Jimmy. I'll send him a psychic message. Or a voodoo doll with pins in it. No, a psychic message. I hope he gets it. Look in the links below to find Shogun Jimmy's page. Not only can you see him put these ridiculously sick handles on, but uh, you'll get to see the cutter in action too. This will be auctioned 100% to charity on eBay, so you can go below to find the details for that too. Well, that was fun. Thanks for watching, and stay saucy.